In this video, our goal is to teach the New York Organ Donor Network approved methods of scrubbing, gowning, and gloving to maintain a sterile field in the surgical suite. We will discuss why it is important to maintain an aseptic technique and provide a step-by-step -step demonstration. An aseptic technique is used to reduce the risk of bacterial contamination in the controlled surgical suite environment. Before preparing your gown and glove setup, Remove any nail polish or jewelry, attire yourself in scrubs, suitable OR shoes, a cap, and a visor mask. Enter the operating suite with a packet of gloves, check for the correct size, and a gown packet. Tear open the plastic gown packet and place the contents onto the flat surface. Open each corner of the drape, extending the edges carefully so they don't refold. The top surface of your drape table now becomes your sterile field. Next, take the packet of gloves and open it onto the sterile field, allowing the gloves inside to tip out. So, let's review. After checking for jewelry or nail polish, donning your scrubs, cap, OR shoes, and visor mask, you prepare the gown and glove setup by tearing open the plastic gown packet, placing the contents onto the flat surface, and opening it carefully to create your sterile field. Then, you open the glove packet and tip the gloves out without touching them onto the sterile field. Now, you're ready to proceed to the designated scrub sink. Check the integrity of your skin and nails thoroughly to confirm they are intact. Proper hand hygiene is one of the most important aspects of the aseptic technique. Regulate the water flow using the foot pedal below the sink. Perform routine hand washing using antiseptic soap, including your forearms. Rinse your hands and arms thoroughly by passing your arms through the running water from hand to elbow. Be sure to keep your hands and forearms raised above the elbow to allow the soap and water to drain from your elbows, not towards your hands. Next, unwrap a scrub packet and remove the contents. Notice there is a bristle brush on one side and a sponge on the other. There is also a nail pick in the container. Carefully clean the subungal area on each finger using the pick under running water. Discard the nail cleaner. Hold the sponge under running water and squeeze to release soap. Begin the scrub by passing your nails back and forth across the brush. Note, the video is showing the scrubbing at a quickened pace. In real time, this would actually be 30 strokes, scrubbing your nails for two minutes on each hand. Each finger has four sides. Scrub each side of each of your fingers individually between your fingers in the web spaces. You should scrub 10 strokes for each side of each finger and thumb for a total of two minutes for each hand. Next, you scrub the dorsal and palm side of your hand. 
This should be 30 strokes for each side of the hand, one minute for each hand. Finally, you scrub each of the four planes of the forearm separately in a circular motion to two inches above the elbow. Each of the four planes should be scrubbed with 10 strokes, taking one minute for each arm. Keep your hands higher than your elbows at all times, with your upper arms away from your body, avoiding non-sterile surfaces. Remember to scrub one hand and arm completely, taking approximately six minutes before moving to the opposite hand and arm. When the scrub is complete, rinse your hands and arms by passing first your hand and then your arm under running water, keeping your elbows flexed. It is not correct protocol to move the arms back and forth through the water. Proceed to the operating suite, continuing to hold your hands above your elbows with your arms away from your scrub suit. Enter by pushing the door open with your back, keeping your elbows flexed, and proceed to the gowning and gloving table that you set up earlier. Remove the towel by grasping only the edge, quickly lifting it up and away from the sterile gown and gloves. Allow the towel to unfold so the long edge hangs down while you're bending slightly forward at the waist so the sterile towel does not touch the scrub suit. Blot the skin moving from hand to wrist to arm without moving back over a previously dried area. To review, the towel is quickly lifted away from the sterile field. Hesitation with the step should be avoided so that water does not drip from the hands to the sterile gown and gloves, causing contamination. Keep the towel out in front where you can see it as you switch to the other end of the towel to dry the second hand and arm. Remember to use a blotting motion while drying. Avoid rubbing the skin back and forth. Use one end of the towel for one hand and arm and the other end for the opposite hand and arm. When both hands and arms are dry, drop the towel into the appropriate receptacle and proceed to gowning. Pick the gown up from the sterile field. Grasp it just below the neckline and lift it up and away from the table without touching anything else with bare hands as you keep the inside surface of the gown facing you. Without lowering the gown, Locate the armholes visually and place your hands and arms inside the sleeves. Advance your hands into the sleeves, keeping them inside the sleeve to about an inch before you reach the knitted cuff. The fingertips should not extend beyond the knitted cuff and sleeve. The front side of your body and your hands and arms are sterile. Ask the circulating person to secure the tie behind your neck and the lower one on the back of your gown. Now you proceed to the glove on the sterile field using the closed technique. While taking care to not allow your fingers to protrude outside of the white knitted cuff, pick up the glove wrapper and open it by grasping the center edges and pulling them outward, exposing the L and the R to indicate the left and right glove. Expose the right glove by lifting the side of the wrapper marked R. Pick up the right glove by side nearest you with your left hand, which remains covered. Position the glove with the fingertips pointing towards you and the cuff of the glove facing up. Fold the cuff of the glove down and slip it over the knitted white part of the gown on your right arm. Note, by positioning the glove correctly before you push your hand into it, with the fingertips pointing toward you and the glove cuff facing up, you ensure that the palm side of the glove is aligned to the palm of your hand and your fingers will slip in easily. Grasp the left glove cuff with your right hand and maneuver your right hand forward into the glove to put it on. The white knitted cuff of the gown remains in the glove. At this point, check both sides for any signs of punctures or tears. If a defect is present, Remove the gloves and don a new pair of sterile gloves. Release the tag while holding the left side of the front tie on your gown. Holding the colored part of the tag out in front of your gown, hand the white part of the tag to the circulating person. The circulating person circles around you with the tag. Pull the right side of the tie from the card and secure the tie. 
Continue to keep your hands above your elbows, close to the front of your body, away from your face and any non-sterile objects so they don't become contaminated. In conclusion, remember the following tips. One, don't let your hands fall below your waist after scrubbing. Two, keep your hands in front of your chest to maintain the sterile field. Three, use the restroom before you scrub to avoid having to scrub twice. Four, don't rush the procedure for fear of being late. Five, having open wounds on your hands precludes a sterile field. You cannot scrub and glove. Six, ask someone to help rather than touch your head or face after scrubbing to maintain the sterile field. Now, we will proceed to an assessment of what we've learned today about aseptic scrubbing, gowning, and gloving. Thank you for your participation.